everyone, Mr. Miyagi style. Happy Easter. It is Easter. I figured I'd do this quick one for you. Um, so you'll see on here, oh, let me just move this. Excuse me. All right, guys, today I'm going to do uh, remotes, the two Insta360 remotes that are available. The GPS action remote and a GPS preview remote. Okay, um, big, big, big differences. So they're gonna kind of battle it out. Which one's better? Which one's better for you? Now, the obvious reason for these remotes is price. Okay, um, the GPS action remote is about half the price of this one. Right now, I think they're on sale. They're about 95 bucks Canadian for the uh, action remote. And the preview remote is about $189, so twice as much. So what do you get for twice the price? I'm gonna go through this remote and I'm gonna go through this remote with you guys, okay? So I'm gonna put the boxes away, that's GPS preview, GPS right here. All right, we have two here, okay? First things first, I'm gonna go over the uh, regular remote. This is the one right here. So pretty simple. What you do get with this is the remote itself, charging cable, and then you get the two straps, okay? Um, one is a, uh, it's basically the handlebar strap, so you, if you turn around, there's like a little slot and you just put it through like this and you just curl it over and you can just put it on a handlebar or a pole or whatever. And the nice thing about this is you can actually spin this around uh, because this on here, it's, it clicks. So you can actually turn it around so you can, you can do different orientations with this one. And then you have the actual watch one, uh, the watch strap, which goes through here, punches through here and then you just curl up like a, like a watch. It's it's long compared to the uh, to the um, the preview remote. The preview remote is kind of fatter, wider, and, and, and shorter, right? And I'll go over that in a second. Um, LED screen, not color, not a touch screen. Okay, you have three buttons. Uh, let me just remove that. So first things first, you have the record button, and then you have the selection button, and then you have the power button. Okay, and then you have the charging cable plug, which is right here, which is USB C cable. Now, a lot of people are saying, uh, we'll get to this in a second. Um, it has got a little uh, kind of a rubber plug that kind of seals it from waterproofing. Okay. Uh, so you just plug it in and it's pretty quick to charge because this is only an LED, right? So to turn it on, it's side button. You keep it on. And you'll see the screen. It's a, I don't know if you can see it on here, it's an LED screen. Okay. Now, here's the kicker here with this remote. Um, this remote used to be uh, used with uh, the RS, uh, the X3, I think. Uh, so it does work with the RS um, camera, well, RS1 camera. I have the RS1 with the 4K and the 360 lens, and it does work with this uh, camera as well. Okay. It was originally for these older ones, but then the last update, or the second last of Ace Pro, is they made it compatible with the, uh, the GPS remote, not the preview one. The preview remote is actually for the Ace Pro only. It does not work with the older models. I'm hoping they will change that because I would love to use the, the, the preview one with the RS1, okay? That said, we're just gonna concentrate on Ace Pro today. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, when you first turn it on, it does not wake the, uh, the camera, okay? Um, it does connect uh, uh, if you hit the, I believe if you hit the record button, I kind of tested this a couple times. I see it does not, okay? So this is really weird. Um, this is the one thing that's kind of glitchy about this. So it does not connect until you, you actually actually manually turn on the camera and then it will connect to it, okay? And it takes a few seconds for it to connect. Yeah, see, it's, it's connected now. I think it's connected. <laughs> Said it connected, but it didn't. Yeah, see the icon. It's kind of glitchy with the connection, um, which is I don't. The only thing I don't like about this is that that part. So, see, it's connected, and it'll shut off the camera, but it won't record. So if I hit this again, see, once you connect it once, it will start waking the, the or it will wake up the camera. But when you started from a cold start, it does not. You have to turn the camera, sync it, and then when you shut it off with this camera, and then you can wake it with this camera again, okay? So now I just hit the record button, and wake it up, and it starts recording, okay? And I can stop it. 
Oh, maybe not. All right, I go. See, now, it takes a while. Okay, now I can stop it. Sorry. So it, it record. It starts to record just like the. Uh, I'll show you the differences between this one and that remote. Uh, this one it's a little bit glitchy. I think there's maybe a couple firmwares that'll make it work, but it does work. Once it connects to it, it works just like. This is the kind of remote that you see with like. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, with GoPro, um, DJI has one like this, but they also have a preview one as well. GoPro doesn't have a preview remote. They only have a very simplified remote, and I think the LED screen is even worse than this one. I have the GP. I have the GoPro remote. They don't have a preview remote. This is why I, I like the preview remote. It's, it's much nicer. So it does connect now. And see, you'll see it's connected. It's actually connected to the GPS as well. I've got two bars in he, underneath uh, in the basement here, which is pretty good. Um, considering that GPS is very finicky when you're indoors. Okay, so if I want to record, I just hit the record button and it will record. Okay, if I want to record off, it records off. And the switch mode is very simple. It's not a touch screen. The switch mode, you just press the side button and it'll go to this mode. So it's gonna go to pure video and then it's gonna go to photo mode. Oh, sorry, time shift mode. Loop recording. Uh, should go to photo mode. And then it's going to go back to video mode. So that's all it does. Okay. And it record you on that. And you, if you want to turn it off, you just press the butt power button and keep it down. It'll shut the camera off first. Okay. So I find that when you connect this to the camera and then you shut it off via here, you can wake it up again by pressing on this without any problem. If you do a cold start, it doesn't work. You have to connect it manually first. Uh, I'm hoping they'll fix that. See, this one will always wake it up now. But once I've connected and I close it with this one, I can always wake it up with this remote, okay? So it's neat because it's waking up the camera, but it actually starts recording once I hit the record. It hasn't really connected the camera. And this is the same thing that happens with the uh, preview remote. It's kind of interesting, I like that, because if you need to quickly record something, uh, all you have to do is hit the record button, it'll actually start recording. And then it'll connect to the camera for you to do the stopping and the, and the, and the uh, video mode changes. So that's a good idea because you don't miss anything. It starts recording right away. And it happens with the preview remote. And I'll show you that as well. Um, so I'm going to shut it off. And off. First time off. Second time is the remote. Now I shut the remote off. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, it works. Um, if you just need a simple remote to remote control your your Ace Pro from from a distance away, or if it's behind you or something like that, this will work. So it works basically like a, a standard, uh, um, very basic, basic remote, uh, um, which is nice because um, Ace Pro did make it uh, um, in their firmware to be compatible with this. So if somebody doesn't want to blow two hundred bucks. They can just blow 85 bucks, 90 bucks on this thing. It's a cheaper alternative to have a remote control for the, uh, for the Ace Pro. Okay, that said, I'm going to put this one away. All right, that's that. Now, you guys have seen me do a, a kind of a review on this already. I love this remote. Uh, I'm sorry, but I will spend the extra money to get this, okay? Um, just because there's so much more to this remote than there is to that one. Um, first of all, it's touchscreen. Second of all, it's color. And third is preview. Okay, three of the biggest things that make this remote much, much more fun to use. That one's kind of the basic remote, you know, if you, if you need, it's like GoPro. I hated the remotes for GoPro. At least DJI has a remote that's similar to this, okay? Um, and the, both remotes will actually capture the GPS stats data, data for the stats uh, feature uh, without any issues. I'll try that on both, okay? Um, so I'm gonna turn this remote on. So this remote, even on a cold start, as long as it's synced to your Ace Pro, it will always turn on both cameras. So I'm gonna start it up. Yeah, it takes a few seconds to do this. See, it wakes up the camera. See. The other remote's different because on a cold start, like if you haven't, what I mean by cold start is if you haven't used it for a while, um, like let's say if you don't use it for two days and you use that remote to turn it on, it will not turn the camera on on the regular remote. This one will always turn the camera on. Uh, so there's there's a link to the two, okay? A better link, uh, whereas the other one does not. 
Um, so it'll actually connect to the camera, wake it up, and then it'll connect to the camera for the actual remote feature. So now you see it, whatever you see here is right here. I love this remote because, you know, it's touch screen. It has a clock. I can go sideways. Sorry. Let me hold it. It's easier to do it on the table. And you can actually do like a dashboard stat on here. It tells you kilometers per hour. This is like a speedometer basically, right? And you can go over and you have a compass. Okay. And you go over and you have your settings and you can do different settings, wake up, display orientation, change orientations, that kind of thing, right? Which is really cool. And then you go back up and then you have the preview screen. And the nice thing about this is where it blows the other uh, remote away is that I can change my settings. You cannot change settings on the other remote, meaning I can change it to uh, de-warp mode, okay, if I wanted to. I can change my video mode, like 2.7K, where you cannot do it with that other remote. You can change your, your ratio standard. You can change HDR, take off HDR, go 60 frames, that kind of thing on here, on the remote itself. So you never have to touch your camera. You can even change the uh, the face metering off and on, okay? Uh, I can change the, I can even actually uh, zoom in and zoom out using clarity zoom on this, rather than using the, um, hey, you can see me. Um, the actual camera so it takes your hands away from the screen if you're in a car or whatever if you're on your bike that kind of thing you have to touch your your camera screen especially when it's facing that way right um, so things like that which is really cool um, so then you can change your 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 modes by doing this uh, as well um, now I don't believe that the the remote you can view no you cannot view I'm sure that'll probably come next uh, in the next uh, uh, from a revision. It has your your specs on the top. HDR has your how much time you have left, uh, what mode, um, that kind of thing. So, and it's a, just a gorgeous screen. It's a super AMOLED screen, right? Um, now, battery life on that, of course, the LED will be better, just because it's just it's just an LED display. It doesn't chew up as much battery life using a. But I've never had issues running out of battery with this one. Um, the screen is just smooth, like you can just, if you look at this, it's just hardly any lag at all uh, on here. Um, it's, 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 it's gorgeous and I use it all the time. The drawback of this unit is I find that the um, GPS locks in much faster with the other one and it locks in indoors. This one has a tough time locking in indoors if you're in inside the uh, house or in the basement. I'm in the basement here. So you'll notice that that one locked in at two bars. This one is still looking for the GPS uh, the thing. Uh, so that's a that's a disadvantage of this. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because it's a smaller unit or it doesn't have as, as a nicer antenna because it's compensating for, you know, uh, the, the, the color display and that kind of thing. But overall wise, like if I want to record on this, it's just a quick record on here okay which is nice and here's the other thing too that i like uh on this recording i can record i can do a pause function on here that you know the uh the usual pause function that you do on your um on your ace pro you cannot do it on the other remote and i use the pause function quite a bit um so that's a nice that's a nice thing to have and i can unpause it and it'll keep going i can stop it okay and it'll stay right Ooh. And it has a uh, it has sound and vibration on this unit too, which is kind of cool. Uh, no, so uh, it only has vibration. I think has a vibration. Yeah, it has no sound. It has only vibration on this one, which is kind of that one doesn't have vibration. So it, that does tell you, uh, alerts you if it stops or records and that kind of thing, right? Um, which is nice because when I hit record, mm -hmm. I can zoom in. Okay, I can even do that uh, highlights, the flagging. I can flag. Uh, marked uh, the video which you cannot do on that review so it's nice to have that touch screen and have those features in your hands on the remote itself right um yeah that's pretty much it guys any questions just uh, drop me uh 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 that's crazy so just drop me any questions down below um uh in my opinion the two going together hands down this is a winner um it is a bit more but you're getting so much more from that price point but at least you have the option of uh, um, uh, going into an inexpensive remote. If you don't really need all this, you just need something for a distance, GPS, um, then yeah, definitely go with the $95 option or even the $90 option. Save yourself a hundred bucks if you don't need all this stuff. For me, I love this and I think this is great um, to be able to do everything pretty much on your remote. 
and then you have all those other options like the uh, speedometer you have the uh, the uh, compass uh, that kind of thing so anyways and the wake option is really good so the other options too is let's say if I want to shut off my uh, my um, uh, devices I just keep it down on the power button and you get three choices so one choice is to, just to turn off the camera I don't want the camera so when I'm in my car and I use this I just want to turn on the camera because I want to keep this locked on GPS and I have it on for quite a long time and the battery doesn't deplete as, as badly right just come home and charge it right um, so I can just turn off the camera which is a top you just slide it over and it'll shut off the camera okay so the second option is to shut off the remote leave the camera on the third option is to shut off both okay so you can actually when you're done for the rest of the day you just hit that shut off all two uh, devices and then you're good to go right um, and then if you want to shut this one off you just keep it down once the camera turns off it doesn't come with a choice anymore it automatically shuts off the the remote which is really cool now the charging pe people were talking about the charging option why did it go with this kind of charging there was a couple of uh, uh, people questioning that okay so you have the open port okay um, this is not waterproof okay or water splash resistant or anything like that the problem with that is especially with salt water because you have an open port in here and this is why uh, um, a lot of watches like the Garmin watch the Fitbit watches or all those kind of have gone to this kind of a charging method okay the reason why is because it's sealed it's just four contacts you'll see on my watch here the Garmin is actually it's brass right uh, it doesn't uh, I think it's brass it doesn't it doesn't corrode um, so this is a dive watch so that's the reason why they've gone with this kind of uh, um i know it's it's proprietary unfortunately you do have to carry the the plug is tiny so it's not a big deal to carry around i carry it with me when i travel um but it's just nice to be it's magnetic so you just it just clips on and sticks on and it just charges and it does a pretty good uh a quick charge it's really fast when you charge this okay this is great for compatibility, but not great for, for proofing, you know, waterproofing or water resistance. If you get water in there, it's pretty much done. Um, you're not going to have that problem here, okay? Um, it is not waterproof. It's water resistant. Um, this is not waterproof, period. Uh, unless you have the seal on, but, you know, I don't trust these things, these seals. Uh, <laughs> you know, they, they don't. They're not that tight. So anyways, that's the reason why they went with this kind of... I, I actually prefer this kind of... Uh, they don't have to open, worry about an open port or things breaking. I've, I've actually had USB where I pushed it in at a wrong angle and I snapped it. Um, yeah, stupid me, right? And it does happen. And you don't have the problem with this. It's magnetic. Okay? That's it. What comes with this one, the color remote, is two of these. So you get this. It's not just the straps. Uh, it's actually like wrist like they're actually framed and they fit in tight they're not you can shake it on they don't come out right uh so you have the watch one and then you have the uh the one for the handlebars or, or whatever roll bars or that kind of thing it's a nicer these are a little nicer i think um that the the pegs are a little bit nicer whereas these ones are just like a little little button uh, i think this will hold a little bit better as well um and then you have the opening for the charging. They don't have the opening for charging for the regular one. I don't know why. They should have just made an opening. I guess maybe because of straps, right? But for the watch one, you don't have to take it out and then charge it. This one, you do have to take it out to charge. That's the only thing I don't like about it. Um, this one doesn't, you just, it's just, it's exposed. So it doesn't really matter. Anyways, uh, the only, the only complaint that people had was, was this was too short. Okay. Like for me, I'm at about three notches left and I have thin wrists, right? For people, there's been a few people that's uh, commented on my uh, on a previous video that they couldn't um, fit this because their wrist is much thicker, so this was useless to them. So I'm hoping that Insta360 will come up with a with another optional bend that has a longer uh, strap for people with larger wrists, or even like an extension of this, because uh, I've seen them. You can actually get extensions for these that just basically extends this, right? But I don't know how. How well that's gonna work um, just better just to have a whole new one anyways guys that's it for the remotes I hope I covered everything um, definitely the uh, I'm, I'm I'm all for the preview remote it's a bit more but it's definitely worth it for me so drop me uh, any questions if you have uh, you guys saw this I will do this next this is the insta360 selfie stick powered selfie stick okay so it has the remote controls at the bottom i can actually control on and off record on here 
uh, with a selfie stick, and this extends to I think three feet uh, long. So it's pretty, and it's also got a battery inside, so it actually charges your uh, your camera while it's connected. So that's next time, guys. Have a good one. Have a good Easter. Enjoy. Eat lots. Don't drink too much. Have a great night, guys. Respect.